thick sub those suffering. In time, God chose her to suffer. Meanwhile, you as a family of mother and father and two girls had the beautiful and very valuable upbringing as part of the kingdom of God. What I hear from what you are doing today was also a lifestyle of your parents. Your mother was once upon a time a Eucharistic minister. That means life spent specifically in the service of the church, of the people of God, giving them communion, going to their homes, concerned about their health, about their well-being, was part of Maria's life once upon a time. And the beautiful thing is, my dear brothers and sisters, when we look at the need of the existence of the kingdom of God in our families that we need, and it all starts with the Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come convince us in our families. So, where is the kingdom? It's right here in our families, in our parish, the way we live. And the way Maria and her husband, Garbo, nurtured her daughters. Today, I hear that one of them is a lay chaplain and also a Eucharistic minister, and also the other is a Eucharistic minister out there in London. Establishing the kingdom of God, being part of the kingdom of God, has been a habit, has been a lifestyle. So where is the kingdom of God? As Jesus rightly said, don't look at there, here, and where it will come. It is right here. And it is our responsibility as parents especially to make the kingdom of God present in our families. And how beautifully it was happening in your family as suffering. The boat from the blue came into the life of especially the mother who had a long innings of suffering. Sufferings of asthma, suffering of pain in her feet, in her legs, and she was rendered immobile. She had difficulty breathing, but there was peace in her heart, in her exuberance. There was no complaining, no grumbling, no impatience. On the contrary, as Kanko was telling me, it was she who was the motivation to be loving, caring, and patient in the husband and wife relationship. When the husband tended to get impatient, it was she who, after a couple of days, said it to him, well, it's not this way. You need to do it this way. You need to be more patient. You need to be more kind and gentle. Why are you getting excited? My dear brothers and sisters, that's the beauty of the life that God gives us. We, as partners in life, maybe parents, spouses, children, are helping each other to live according to the kingdom values in our day-to-day -day living. That's the challenge. That's the simplicity. That's the Christian witness that we need to give to our fellow buyer members. Why they struggle? Why they miss God's values? Why they push the church in a corner? Each one of us is called to build the church, to love the church, to be of service to the church. And of course, we have Jesus speaking today in today's gospel also about the day of the Lord. The Jesus said to the disciples, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man and you will not see it. Look there, again, look there, look here. Do not go, do not set up in pursuit. But as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky, the Son of Man 
in his day will come. Today, some days back, when the time came for Maria to give up her last breath, she experienced the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is something which we need to all prepare ourselves for. Because unless we repent, unless we accept our symptoms, unless we hear and pattern our life according to the word of God, we shall not be ready for the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord will come like lightning, it is said in today's gospel. We know how frightening and how sudden and sometimes destructive is lightning. But Jesus, when he comes, in that last day, will come to lead us to the gates of heaven and into the heaven to receive our eternal reward. So my brothers and sisters, today we are asking ourselves, around what is our life revolving? Pomp, name, fame, greed, collection of riches, or are we on the track of the kingdom of God? Building the kingdom of God silently, vigorously, devotedly, competitively, in all that we do, in all the aspects of our life. We do not allow the enemy to snatch away the territory from our kingdom. And that's the challenge. It could have happened to Maria. She was with this suffering and she would have always grumbled. She could have gone into depression. She could have been a uh, terror in the house. But no, she was a calmly, a peaceful person, an exemplary woman, always had a good word, smile, an endurance of and in the midst of her suffering all the life. These are the beautiful lives that we have been celebrating in the past weeks as some of our senior citizens left us one after the other and today is the time of Maria to join with her Heavenly Father, with her brother Jesus, with Mother Mary, with the Holy Trinity and the Spirit with which she was always endowed with the Holy Spirit of God, she will rejoin with this Trinity in the heavens. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what is our life. A time to be born, a time to work hard, sweat it out, and a time to harvest the fruit of our hard labor. We journey the path of life holding tightly the hands of our God, holding faithfully the hands of Jesus. Lead us on the way of life to eternity. That's our prayer. And to always see the kingdom of God triumph. Today, the kingdom of God is under attack from all sides, especially in the modern environment of media, communication, there is a threat to us from being totally engrossed in matters concerning the kingdom of God. And then our families go there, our children go there, their futures are worldly. We have a wonderful example of this family of children carrying forward the mission of their parents, especially in the field of being very, very active in church service in distant lands, in the lands from which we receive our faith, let that be our lifestyle. And our church will be flourishing. Our church will be rich. Our church and parish will one day regroup, get together once again in heaven. That's our prayer for every parish. That's our prayer for this parish. And for each one of us gathered here, let's be inspired with the simple, simple and yet faithful, committed life to God of Maria that may take us also once again to the heavenly gates by all that we do and by all that we commit ourselves to do in every Eucharist 
at every prayer and at every meeting with the Lord.